Hey, yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Actually, I don't even know if I should say welcome back, but welcome uh, nonetheless. As you can tell, it's a little bit of a home setup because it's been a year of transition, but still, you know, uh, we're back at it. My name is Mugu Zayim Lambo. This is Zazi Says Something. It's Zazi Says Something, but it is more of a point of order, more of a PSA, more of a, hey, yo, hear me out, more of a, Yo, we got something to talk about, yeah? And uh, it's one of my favorite seasons in Zimbabwean hip hop because I think, you know, uh, Zim hip hop has had a decent year. Um, I don't think it's been as amazing as last year was um, in terms of just like the fire, just like the output, just like, you know, different people coming out and, uh, you know, legends resurrecting and then new stars coming out and then so much talk, so much buzz you know like the whole country was popping but uh this has been this has been like the second season syndrome of of zim hip-hop you know like after your favorite artist puts out like a great song a great first hit a great first album and then we're like okay can you do it again for the second time so i feel like this has been the season uh like that for uh for zimbabwean hip-hop now uh, it hasn't quite met the the high standards of the first season, um, but still the second season I think I think has been good enough. I think the momentum is great, so the culture is healthy and the culture is doing well. And it wouldn't be Zim hip hop without beefs. It wouldn't be Zim hip hop without Twitter back and forth and and all these other things, man. But it is my favorite season, as I said, because it's award season which is exciting you know what that means that means feelings are going to be caught that means you're going to see a little bit more of output from your favorite rappers you're going to see them a little bit more communicative you're going to see them in the streets you're going to see a little bit of more controversy here and there because that's how the culture is you know you want to stay relevant especially when it comes and you might not admit this when it comes to the highest accolades within the Zimbabwean hip-hop culture and that is the Zimbabwean hip-hop awards right now I'm not talking to people who say oh we don't care about these awards eh, yeah right you know what I mean there are genuinely some people who don't care about them but for everyone within the game this means a lot and I've seen that it means a lot there's been a track record that it definitely means a lot from legends past legends today and legends in the future I've seen people just bring that up uh, like oh these awards are rigged well if you didn't care you wouldn't say they're rigged would you anyways i'm veering off anyways it's zim hip-hop award season and i want to talk about something uh that is of importance and that is in my opinion the biggest award of the night right uh it's not best male it's not best song it's not best collaboration it's not best female uh it's it's not best video um, but consistently it has been and i think will always will be best album that is the album of the year one of the most contentious awards that will be given and that has been given uh, in the past right this award always gives people uh <laughs> heart pains heartburns uh, because it means so much it means so much to the culture just like even in the grammys best album it means a lot and it's saying something that even today in the grammys no rap album has ever won best album of the year and that means something it also shows you where hip-hop is and same thing applies in zimbabwe as well it is a contentious award and it is an important award because like it or not if you're an artist within this country um and you you say you you are the guy you you are there best album is a legacy like no one can take that away from you that will always be there uh the only problem or rather things that have come up that have always been a uh, a bone of contention is that we've never known uh the criteria in which this award is chosen um and we've never known who's been on the panel um, in the voting process when it comes to that because um, it's just been one of those right now big shout out to beefy um, just for what he's done for the culture it's definitely a legend in the game and 
of all the awards that have been uh, on the Zim Hip Hop Awards, um, with much controversy here and there, it is safe to say that the Zimbabwean Hip Hop Best Album category has, for most part, has been the most consistent, right? It has been the most consistent um, when it comes to who wins it. Uh, there's been there's been controversies, but within those controversies, most of the time you can justify the decision, right? Now there have been in other in other in, in other awards like people can debate. Nah, that wasn't song of the year. That wasn't even a hip hop song. Nah, he can't be best male. He's not even a hip hop artist, right? Or this is not best video. Or this is not best collaboration. How did they leave this? verse for verse of the year <laughs> you know what i mean so it has been like that consistently however uh what we do have with the zimbabwean hip-hop uh zim hip-hop best album award it has it has been since the inauguration of this award ceremony has been one of the most co consistent like you can go through time like i'm looking at my list right now uh 2011 uh it was junior brown and mc cheetah with hre king's run of war 2012 sin city uh 2013 it was um the feeling ain't fair uh 2014 blood, blood money jacob by poi 2015 year of the vein one of the best albums of all time sokomatemai uh on in 2016 uh with sokomatemai his debut album definitely classic in my book 2017 better than your album debatable but you know it was one of those ones like I said, it can't be all perfect, but people can argue, you can argue that the list has been solid. 2018, uh, Mzukuru. Mm. 2019, King98. Mm. Uh, you know, 2020, Atama Streets. Here we go. Classic. 2021, Risky Life. Mm. Which brings me to 2022 because I must say, I'm a little bit worried. All right. I don't get nervous, but you know what I mean? I'm going to get a little nervous. You know that meme? You don't know it if you know you know if you don't you don't um but it is one of those awards that has been consistent like even in the years that i've mentioned you can always debate because some incredible albums have come out right that didn't win you know chepa jecha didn't win color of dreams by guluva seven didn't win um kudenga kure by r pills for me arguably his best album did not win that award right and that's because there has been some blips which have made the decision making a little bit edgy because we're thinking what is the criteria to which we choose this particular album now the thing is why am i even talking about this when the ceremony hasn't even started or the awards haven't been given it's because i'm worried man i think this year has had some incredible 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 um hip-hop albums and there are some really dope albums and projects that i'd love to see on that list that i have a feeling are not only uh not only gonna win but they might not even make the list all together and that worries me and reason being is because from around i'm gonna ignore 2017 but from around 2018 we've had it's been more it's been more misses than hits, right? 2019, you had uh, King 98. Ah, uh, no, 2018, you had Mariachi's Mzukuru. Good album, solid album. But for me, it, it felt like a, a compilation of singles altogether. Like you listen to that album and there's a lot of things happening within that album. I left that album not even knowing like, hey, what was I listening to? Some great songs, but what do I know about the artist? I don't know anything because it's just been a lot of things happening with a lot of radio bangers so maybe that played into uh played into the picking right so there's things like that and then 20 uh 90 uh, king 98 now he's doing his things over in the diaspora back and forth arguably also one of the best live performers actually um in in hip-hop now you can debate that if you if you want but for this album considering the albums that it was up against, you know, um, Scripian by Script Mula, uh, you had The People's Rapper, which I think was an EP, so maybe that. God is My Therapist by uh, R. Pills as well, Ghetto Chronicles, and I'm just like, hey man, what did we, what did we use to choose uh, this criteria? 
2020 is the COVID year. Now, this is where um, we had a bit of a high. Now, Batama Streets wins this uh, by Django Loco, certified classic, and I think an album that's going to outlive, um, you know, the test of time uh, and has proven two years on it is still uh, solid, you know. Um, initially, I actually thought our pills with uh, Muchinjiko would win, um, but you know, I'm, I'm not too proud to admit when I'm wrong. And looking at it now in hindsight, I'm like, hey man, that album definitely, Jungle Loco was a classic. Now, 2021, Holy Ten's Risky Life wins it. Now, there's a little bit of disparity there because now you're like, okay, you have a classic album like Batama Streets, which wins best album. And you can see the reasons why, right? How it sounds, the lyricism, the production, uh, everything is great. The rollout, the sequencing, it's good. And you're like, yeah, Django Loco is not a bigger hip hop artist than Holy Ten, but he wins this on merit, right? Django Loco, I don't even think he's a bigger artist than R Pills, but he wins this on merit. And then you have Risky Life coming in and you're thinking, okay, what, is, what has happened here? And what is, what is the criteria that has been used here? Uh, because I wouldn't say it's the production. I wouldn't say it's the rapping. I wouldn't say it's the thematic consistency on the project because I didn't feel all those things considering the albums that it was up against. It was up against Trash. Uh, what other album was out there? Uh, it was Revelations as well uh, was up there. Albums that had some level of consistency where if maybe one is missing on lyricism it can make on thematic consistency or on the sonic aesthetics uh, of it so now i'm wondering okay how do we how do we how do we get here how do we make sure that what happened last year and this is no you know this to, to holy 10 incredible artist rap superstar but come on man i do not think risky life was the best album of 2021 which brings me to 2022 now let me run you through some of the albums that have been released uh this year at least from the big four or five anyways i can say uh life on life of movimi by uh Vols jt energy by holy 10 unicorn by brian jake sona season is an ep i don't know if eps are in co consideration but we'll see really ever beautiful too by r pills and then we had Cynics, uh, sophomore album, Travel Guide for the Broken, The Release Point by Dialect Blue, uh, Link the Prayers as Peasant Sun, uh, Jungle Locos, um, Gualam Nandi, uh, Sun, self titled Sun, uh, Camouflage by Freshie, um, Tavern Hotel by Dingo Duke, Drilla is Matter by Leo Magos, uh, Economy by Malcolm Mufunde, Yad Universe, uh, Every Ghetto, Every City by Steve. And I've left out so much more. And we still have more albums that are yet to drop. We have uh, Block 34 by Indigo Saint. We have Scripian 2 coming. We have the new commission, uh, Volume 1 by Ray Cass coming now. We got Sunguram Sebe uh, 2, if you count that as hip hop. Um, I don't know if Tanto Wave even counts it as hip hop. But like, you have so your big morpho coming out. Incredible albums and projects have come out this year. And obviously, not all of these are going to be on the nomination list, but hey, man. <laughs> so maybe for transparency's sake, we need to have a conversation on what is the criteria that is used to choose the best album. I remember seeing some tweets by R. Peel saying, "Do not nominate people that we don't know." When it comes to when it comes to best album, nominate uh, best on. Uh, I think he said themes. I think he said features, uh, numbers as well. Now I don't know. The thing is, with Zim Hip Hop, it's a fairly, fairly new, um, it's, it's, it's a young, as far as coming into the mainstream, it's still very young. Zim Hip Hop has been around since the 1980s, right? The Zim Hip Hop Awards have been here for 10 to now 11 years, going 11 years, right? So it's fairly new when it comes to at least the award, awarding system. But if there is no transparency, uh, on the criteria that is used because I feel like for the last five years it has been a little bit up and down like I said and I'm a little bit worried I'm not gonna lie I'm a little bit worried but my criteria for choosing the best hip-hop album uh, should cover three things and that is the content and the thematic coherence of that album so the content is what is being talked about in this album and the theme is 
what is the main idea, the subject matter within the album? And is it consistent from track one to 10, from track one to 14, from track one to 11? You know what I mean? Is that consistent throughout the album? Number two for me is the Sonic, the Sonics. How is that album sounding? So that is the production, the engineering, the mixing and the mastering and the technicalities of the rapping. It is Zim hip hop. So it hip hop has a rapping in it. You have to rap at some point. <laughs> you have to rap at some point in your album and you have to rap well. Don't just rap, you have to rap well. And I think that's where the subjectivity comes in. But if your album sounds good, is consistent, but your raps are whack, what are we doing? You know, people might rock with it. But then again, I don't believe in a democracy, man. I don't believe in, hey, let's vote for the, for the best guy because it doesn't always work like that. You know, it doesn't always work like that. Some, some people aren't good voters as this country will tell you by this country i mean zimbabwe or at least officially that's what it shows uh on the voting polls you know we are not a good voting race right uh, across america uh the british like everywhere we're just not a good people when it comes to voting uh, as in multiple numbers right we can't we're not always trusted to do that the third one is critical acclaim and that means what are the streets saying what is the cultural impact that this album has had you know will it be able to stand the test of time now this one is is tricky because it feels like it's intangibles right and the reason why i didn't include things like numbers or number of streams and things like that because some artists are big better than others and are bigger than others and therefore they will not draw the same numbers jungle local will never be able to pull vols jt's numbers it's not happening until the rest of the country probably wakes up and they're like hey i think that guy is pretty dope and that's what i think is missing in our culture i think we have to be at a point where we say okay it's not about the numbers what are we putting forth you know what i mean what are we um what are we saying is good right what is good now if you're a christian uh you know like when god creates the universe and he says and it was good because he deemed it good now i'm preaching <laughs> but that's besides the point what i'm saying is i think we shouldn't be afraid to take risks and this sounds like I'm, it's a pr stunt but um because i fear something is gonna happen that i'm not gonna be happy with man when it comes to this criteria because i really do care and i i want there to be consistent because look at the albums in the past that have worn they didn't have great numbers or, or things like that but they did have these things that i mentioned at least to some level at least two of those three things right you had the con the content the thematic consistency you had the sonics it sounded great the rapping was great the critical acclaim it was well received by the people you know what i mean so uh, what are we gonna do what are we gonna do about and i just want to say man that, that, <laughs> there's there's an album that i feel is gonna win and i'm just like we cannot let that album win okay <laughs> now i don't know if you what you think about me as a person what do you think about zazi say but if you think we are biased or in any way but i'm just gonna say right now there is no such thing as uh, objectivity when it comes to art like it's hard but i think we can get somewhere close i think we all have our biases you are watching you probably have your own biases you probably think um you know there's a certain a certain artist who should win this because they did this and that and then maybe there's your your underrated artist you know, the guy who's always underrated i have my underrated artist you have your own underrated artist but i really do think that to the panel if you're watching this you know let's do this for the culture for real for real when we're saying with let's do this let's do this for the culture man like there have been some great albums my personal favorite it doesn't even matter should i even tell you it doesn't even matter but I'm, I'm i'm albums that were released that gave me that feeling that oh yeah hip-hop is alive in this country hip-hop is doing well in this country and even the albums that are yet to come out that i believe are gonna do 
amazing. And with that being said, that's it, man. That's it. That's all I think. That's all I think. You let me know if you think um, if you think I'm right. If you think I'm wrong. Uh, do you have the same fears as me? All 50 to 100 of you who watch these videos. Thank you as always. Do remember to like, share, and subscribe. You know the steez. I've been Mugudzeim Blavo, and <laughs> catch you on the next one. It's true.